<laughs> Where do you guys see yourself uh, five years from now with this series? Her, oh, where do we see ourselves? Yeah. And I assume I will be dead. <laughs> if um, we're making the show for another five years, we probably will be dead. It will kill us. It will be a happy death, but it will probably kill us. Um, no, I guess five years from now, if we could still be doing the show, I would actually be thrilled. Um, it's Fun. such a blast to do. And it never, like, there's never been a day on set where you go, oh, no one was funny today. Like, every day, uh, you're laughing your ass off. How hard is it to get some of the uh, NFL football players on, I guess, starring on the show? It's not that hard, I have to be honest what, with you. Originally, it was difficult. Originally, it was difficult, but now we get more calls from people who want to do the show than we have space for. So it's a lot of pressure, actually, from agents and managers whose clients are huge fans of the league or they think it would be a good thing for them to be on the show. And uh, it's, it's you have to come up with a good story for it or it doesn't happen. Right, because this isn't our list. These are just... You know, six schmoes from Chicago. <laughs> so Gotta you have to—it has to feel believable somehow. When you're when you're in production for the show itself, where does your writing end and their improvising begin? Well, we write, you know, single-spaced, you know, 12, 15-page outlines that have, you know, scene numbers and locations and lots of dialogue in them. And then, you know, it's our responsibility as showrunners, particularly of a show that's made probably for a lot less money than any other show that's coming through here. Um, we only have three and a half days an episode to shoot. So you, you don't have a lot of time to get in there and just dick around. <laughs> You've got to get in there and know that you're going to be able to shoot that episode in three and a half days, which is it's pretty fast. Um, so I think what where the improvising begins is, you know, we put stuff in it in there in those outlines. But unlike most, you know, network shows or some cable shows, we're not married to every single word and all the punctuation that goes with it. And so people get to say it in their own way, and they can beat the joke. And if you've got a better take on that line, if you've got a better joke, bring it on. And often they do. And 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 there's and a lot of great stuff that comes from it that feels funnier and more natural. Yeah. And every every scene that we shoot. There's an outline, and then there's the rewrite, the live rewrite that happens on on camera. And so between the first take of the scene and the sixth take of the scene, that scene is getting rewritten many times, and then it's getting rewritten again in the edit room, where we have to take all these choices that all these amazing guys have said, and we're throwing lines out, and they're throwing lines out, we're trying all the stuff, and then in the edit room, you've got all these choices, and you sort of figure out, okay, what's the absolute funniest version of this scene? We're only going to be able to use 30% of it for, for air. Um, and, you know, we'll use the best 50% for the DVD. And sometimes somebody will improvise a line, and it's a great idea, but it's not exactly what's going to work. And, you'll, and we'll sit there and say, okay, take a little bit of that, but then do this instead. And so it becomes this collaborative process of, you know, a really terrific kernel of a new idea that then, do, or sometimes it's just terrific dialogue that just replaces what's already there. So. There's a lot of, like, breaking out of character, because everybody, I imagine, is so funny and make it a little bit longer days, like, because uh, having to do retake after retake. Um, we there definitely, are. if you saw the DVD from last year, you know, sort of Jason Manzoukas and Nick Kroll trying to get through this conversation about Whitney Houston dying and Michael Jackson knowing, and we ended up doing it differently in the DVD, but if you were watching the quad split on set with sort of the three monitors together, um, you would see that we had to actually ask Nick to get up from his chair and stand in the corner of the room and turn around because out of the corner of Jason's eye, he could see him laughing and Jason couldn't get through his dialogue in his single. And then he could see Nick's shoulders bouncing and it was driving him crazy. So we had to have removed Nick from the room, which is hilarious. So you're watching the three cameras, you know, the monitors, and now he's playing his single, Jason's doing his single for his dialogue to an empty room because Nick can't control his laughter and Jason can't finish his performance without it. So yeah, no, there's a it lot definitely of, happens. There's a lot of, okay, let me get through this. All right, let's get, all right. I'll try. It just weird things set them off. Like it's not even like it's a very it's a very personal specific kryptonite that each one of them has that sets them off. That's just a a really funny thing to watch. The Rocky Dirty Randy episode from this season. What was happening with that? Because when I start, was watching, I was like, Are we doing a backdoor pilot to a spinoff show right now? No. And then it, when you get to the end, you're like, Okay, I don't know what's happening anymore. So what, what was the inspiration behind that particular episode? Jason and uh, Jeff and I were working one night, and he had been speaking to Seth after they'd worked together. Jason and Seth had never met until they were on the league. We cast 
Seth as Dirty Randy and told Jason he was very excited and excited to work with Seth. Um, they actually became good buddies and they're doing other stuff together and a, a really nice relationship has been born off of that. But um, Jason came to us one night and said, what if Seth and I wrote an episode and we did this like crazy, Rafi, Dirty Randy episode? That sounds awesome. Let's do that. And after five years, I think it's fun to change things up, give fans a different experience, and then come back home too. But uh, I think Jason and Seth are, are both too uh, busy to run a television show with Rafi and Dirty Randy. And also, I'm not sure what network's going to air that every week. That we would, that would have advertising yeah, still. We would do so. it in a second. And Seth and Jason both have some other stuff going on. But They're, I mean, uh, super happy. It's brilliant. We loved it. We'd yeah. do it again in a second. Yeah, anything like that. For us, it's whatever's the, we're all trying to make the funniest half hour, the funniest half hour, the funniest half hour. And it's nice to, we, our universe has expanded in a nice way over these last five years. We've had amazing guest cast, and it's nice to be able to spend time with some of these other amazing, amazing people, who, you know, instead of just giving them a few minutes on the show. All right. Thanks, guys. Sorry, we've got to switch.